Some of you may know, Jeremy was the Lord Mayor of Sydney from 1989 to 1991. He has over 48 years experience in general practice, specialising in local government, development and town planning in the Land and Environment Court. He was also Manly's external solicitor for more than 20 years. Now an interesting thing about Jeremy is he played a pivotal role in the restoration and adaptive reuse of the Queen Victoria building and the Capitol Theatre, both of which had been earmarked for demolition. Yes, that was a great thing. I'm proud to say that he's also my husband. Uh, so, of course, he's had no choice but to be deeply involved in this issue since it was launched in 2011. Please welcome Jeremy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Local councils exist for only one reason, and that is to serve the local community. That's us. And as such, they are custodians of our public assets and our money. And they should take a conservative approach to both of those things. Now, I don't think there'd be anybody here who objects to the Manly 2015 plan objective of revitalising the lanes and public spaces uh, cutting down on tr through traffic, pedestrianising the, the local village. I think we all agree with that. Our problem is with how they're going to do it. And the whole plan is based on destruction. Destruction of our library. 18 years old, winner of an architectural award, designed to stand for many years and designed to be raised another two stories. It's built into the design by Faco Bowman. Destruction of an asset which is returning the council $700,000 a year. $700,000. That's a fair contribution towards keeping our rates down and that's the Worcester Street car park. It involves the destruction of the village green at Manly Oval, an iconic village green, you'll hear more about that from Rob Burgess. Uh, and, and I'll explain later why it means its destruction. Uh, it means destruction of our secure financial position. Manly Council at the moment is in a good financial position, and we're lucky that that's so. That's to be destroyed. And, and you'll see why the destruction of Manly Village itself will be the outcome of this plan. I can think of four compelling reasons why the 2015 plan is flawed and must not be allowed to proceed. And I no doubt there are plenty of you who have other reasons as well. The first reason is financial risk. And Peter Greentree, will be our, our international banker, will be explaining that to you in some detail. But the proposal is to plunge this council into $80 million of debt and if the council's figures are right, if they're right, and there's a lot of evidence that they're not, the in, what's called the internal rate of return, which is an accountant's concept, on that will be 1.8% after deduction, 1.6% after deduction of 5% interest, if you can keep it to 5%. Uh, that is a thin margin and a theoretical figure. What in fact they're proposing will mean a cash shortfall right from day one for at least the first 10 years and subject to what interest rates go to who knows how many decades. Um, if their assumptions are wrong, of course, we get a whole different picture. Now, the council will tell you that they've had an independent verification of their figures by KPMG, a very respected organisation. But that's not the fact. If you read the KPMG documents, they say in a number of places that they have accepted the information given to them by council, in spite of the fact that it's very conflicting and changes all the time. They haven't done an independent report. They haven't given an independent recommendation. They've said in effect, well, if the council's right, then there's a theoretical 
6% margin and theoretically on your assumptions uh, you, you'll be able to do it. Uh, private enterprise wouldn't touch it with a large pile. There's got to be a far bigger return and people say oh yeah well that's because private enterprise wants to make a profit. Sure they do but they, the main feature is they want to avoid the risk. The risk of things going wrong. I don't know how many of you think uh, that you know what's going to happen to you and your finances in the next 10 years or 20 years or 30 years? I certainly don't know. I didn't predict the global financial crisis. We don't know what's coming. And even if the council's costing was right and it isn't, all sorts of things could go wrong. And the problem is, if you're a developer and you go bust, you just the company goes into liquidation and you walk away. You can start up another company. But councils can't go bust. The council is here forever. And who meets the council's debts? We do, the ratepayers. And the ratepayers have to meet the council's debts no matter how long it takes. We just go on rating them, increase the rates as we have to. We have to pay and our liability is unlimited. Unlimited, ladies and gentlemen. Who wants to take the risk? Why? The second reason why this plan is flawed is the lack of community consultation. This whole thing, which has been done in a secretive manner, the councillors haven't been involved in the decision making. You look at the council minutes, you won't find, you'll find a retrospective of approvals with the 5-4 majority, the 5-4 Liberal majority on the council, retrospective approval of what the general manager has done. But the general manager keeps racing ahead, doing things under his delegated powers, the councillors aren't informed, the public are not consulted, the community are not consulted. And when the local precinct committees had the temerity, temerity to question the finances, they received a most abusive letter, and you'll hear about this later, abusive letter accusing them of being political and how dare you ask questions and, you know, it's nothing to do with you. It's extraordinary business. The, the, uh, the approach, that approach of its own is enough to, to bring a halt to this process. The third reason why this is flawed is the destruction of infrastructure. The Worcester Street car park, 350 cars, is in a very convenient location. It's yielding $700,000 a year. And yes, it's not a very pretty building. And yes, it needs a bit of maintenance. That's because the council hasn't been spending any money on maintenance. But it can easily be upgraded, and the fake Obama plan was to put a roof on it and, and improve the facade in a, in a lot of ways. And it's above ground, we all prefer to park above ground rather than underground. And, and you won't get another car park anywhere near as convenient a position as that. So it needs some treatment, but it's too valuable an asset to discard. And, and the other thing is the destruction of the fake Obama 18 year old library building designed to go two storeys up. Why would you pull that down? And in the 2015 plan, there's not even a discussion of that. They've just forgotten about that. The, the, the plans were made then for the future, and there's been no explanation of why we abandoned them and why we would destroy such a valuable building. A fourth reason, ladies and gentlemen, why this is flawed is that the Oval Car Park is a disaster. The whole concept is a disaster. It was twice before considered by council and twice before rejected as unworkable. Nothing's changed. <coughs> First of all, it's flood prone. There's a creek down there. And you know it floods in heavy rain. There was to be a big detention tank. There still is going to have to be a big detention tank. But in order to make the costings look better, the cost of the detention tank has been taken out and that's going to be funded who knows how as a separate issue. But what if, what if the building this two-storey car park under the groundwater level isn't properly designed or if we get more flooding than we thought and the car park floods? Imagine if your car's in there when it floods at the lower level. What's the insurance outcome of that? Are you covered for flood insurance? Are you quite comfortable that you'll be able ultimately to get your car towed out and get it fixed and it's not going to cost you money? The insurance consequences are quite extraordinary. Is the council insured if the, if the car park floods? I can assure you that I wouldn't be comfortable leaving the car in there. Uh, 
it, the car park will involve the most extraordinarily ugly entrance in Sydney Road. You come down Sydney Road to the entry to Manly, which is unprepossessing as it is now, badly needs to be improved. But you're going to have this big black moor of the car park to dive down the hill and then into the car park. It's going to be a hideous disfigurement of the entry to Manly. The village green character will be completely lost at the Manly Oval if they put a car park under there. It's going to be, again, a two-storey car park. It's going to be, uh, it's going to have to be ventilated, both naturally and mechanically. So you're going to have, it's going to have to pop out of the ground by at least a metre and a half. Uh, you're going to have big, ugly, open vents for ventilation and exhaust stacks to suck the uh, car exhaust out. When you look at it from standing on a footpath, when you look at the oval, instead of looking at a village green and the grass and the, and the players, you'll be looking at the wall of the car park and the players' feet will be at about eye level in amongst the past acts and the industrial appearance of the ugly wall. It'll be just as hideous as you can imagine. Uh, it's going to mean a loss of 100, you heard that before, 100 on street spaces, and we all prefer to park on street and we're lucky enough to get it on street space. Another hundred gone there, and uh, it will be too far from the village. To walk from there to the village, healthy ones, sure. Yeah, wait, I like to say one trouble me. But, uh, but older people, mums with cramps, little toddlers, it's too damn far. Now, if you're going to get in your car, I ask you, if you're going to get in your car and drive to that car park, where you're then going to have to do that walk, crossing the streets, why won't you just go a little further and go on to Stockings or yeah. Ring a Ball where the parking is right there, all under cover, it's all convenient. That's what will happen. Yeah. This car park won't be used by locals, it'll be used only by tourists. And that, the end result is going to be, that's who's going to use the Manly Village. Mm. So what we're going to get, time up? Let me wind up. Let me wind up. Let me wind up. What we're going to get is more t-shirt shops, more t-shirts, more tourist junk, uh, more fast food, um, and of course more bars. Now, I'm sure that's all what we want, but it won't be the beliefs that we want. So what we need to do is take one of the other options. There are a lot of other options that don't involve anything like this expenditure. Low cost options, preserving the existing infrastructure, pedestrianising and activating the laneways and public spaces, all the good things can be done without this hideous expense. Yeah. Thank you.